If you lose sight of what's going on in the patterns of nature around you, then you can abstract a thousand times into your own worlds and you can make up you can make up a whole world inside your own mind. But it doesn't mean it's the world that's going to reflect the reality that we see around us. And you know, we see some of this these kinds of concepts in the later parts of module three as we get into um, string theory especially where you know within string theory there's postulations of you know 11 different dimensions you know seven of which are compactified and completely hidden from any ability to measure or you know take any instrumentation and get information from them um, and and yet we're using that the the idea or the theory of these compactified dimensions to explain classical physical processes that we don't understand <laughs> and and so you know part of this journey of bridging from unified from modern physics to unified physics i feel like is a lot of returning to these fundamental patterns it's about coming back to like what's really important and what's really valuable and what we're being shown in the world and the universe around us all the time I think it's no mistake that people that immerse themselves in the study of nature um, have always like led the way in some of the greatest insights that we've made as a human species um, on this planet. And, and most of our great breakthroughs have happened from people who had a deep communion with nature. And in fact, you know, for thousands of years, a lot of these people, they were you know they were not considered physicists they were considered philosophers and they were studying you know the basic philosophy of the patterns of of space and the patterns of nature and the plants and categorizing animals and categorizing leaf patterns and flower patterns and etc and that's a lot of what physics is based on and it and it brought to the surface some of the really big critical and crucial questions that um, that really uh, formed the edge of of leading us into a more theoretical physical space. Questions like, what is energy? What is heat? You know, what is mass? And to get to the root of questions like that, uh, we had to go further. You know, we had to we had to dive in deeper and start to understand things. Um, a lot of the early parts of this module are about thermodynamics and we talk about closed systems and entropy and and the idea that you know if you if you have a closed box if you can take a closed box then you know that closed box is always going to be losing energy it's always going to be losing heat it's always going to be entropic right it's our gathering heat it's going to be entropic it's going to be creating more and more chaos um, but th even the idea that we can create this isolated system in the universe that we can take a chunk of something that's obviously interconnected and and totally um, cyclical in its communication and its processes through all of nature and take a chunk of that and say nope this is separate that's this box right here and n nothing's going in and out of this box this is the black box scenario <laughs> and and there's nothing that's going to go in or out of that it's an isolated system and so if we take that we'll understand the universe but the thing is is that we don't see any anything like that in the universe in fact, the only thing that's even come close was the idea of a black body, right? And the idea of a black body is, is you know, what has evolved to what we see as a black hole. This, somehow this container where information is going into it and it's contained and it's somehow an isolated system, right? Like what goes in never comes out. It's isolated. But we've found that even that, even this object which seems like the closest thing to an isolated system in the whole universe that we've ever found is actually not like that at all.